As the second week draws to a close, the number of anime starting to wear starts drawing down. And as ever, I'm falling behind with the anime as well. But you'll be glad to know I've caught up. I'm not only recorded on four episodes a day, I've actually recorded three more for the next episode as well, which means I should be ready to go to finish uploading these before the end of the week. And me falling behind is a bit of a tradition, because, as ever, this is a 2019 autumn anime preview from a different perspective. You know, I have to give No Guns Life props. It definitely has won the award this season for most creatively designed main character. By which I mean the main character is a cross between a gun and Alphonse Elric. So a big metal guy with a head that's a gun. Oh well, girls with guns work series works, what about a boy with a gun? Welcome to the world of No Guns Life. An anime set in a sort of weird, futuristic dystopia where people who are dead are potentially revived as mecha unit and some of them have got weapons for heads and our main character Junzo wakes up after fighting in a war to find out he's now one of these extendeds. His life has been extended, the only problem is now he is a gun. Literally his head is a gun. But he has learned to live with it. He's got a good living as a private detective, although I think the anime creators have taken the word smoking gun to a literal case because every single scene has him smoking. I suppose I can't find the corporate if there's no smoking gun can they? Haha, <laughs> see what I did there. But yeah, this is a gritty private detective investigation show with a dystopian futuristic setting and loads of action and gunplay here and there. There's some dark underground plot involving a fake religious sect and a kid which can extract his own soul and put it into the bodies of other robots which haven't got souls themselves. Yeah, there's a whole load of religious shit going on here, isn't there? I can't really tell you too much about the plot of No Gun's Life because it was hard to follow. All you need to know is that the gun boy is the main boy and the child is the victim. There's not much more to say about this show other than it's airing over at Funimation. Hot on the heels of the other sports anime this season comes Stuff of Stars Align, an anime not about the Cthulhu Mythos and Elder Signs but about tennis and about a boys tennis club which is in the danger of closing because they're so bad at it. But that's how it appears at the start anyway, as we're introduced to a bunch of characters, none of which is actually our main character in the, in the promo image. We're introduced to our main characters, who are just nice guys playing tennis, not very good at it, and their club's going to be shut down because the school doesn't want to spend money on them anymore if they're not going to win. I suppose it's fair play really, if you're not good at tennis, why have a club? But that's when we're introduced to our main character, Mackie. He's a nice guy. He's just moved house, moving schools, relatively straight laced, lives with his mum, and um, yeah. He does all the housework, no idea what his mother does, and they've transferred schools. Why they've transferred schools, I don't know. Well, actually, I do, that's at the end of the episode. It's kind of blatant why they've moved schools. But he is potentially the saviour of the tennis club, because he's very good at tennis, it seems. But he's got no interest in playing tennis. He wants to be part of a go home club, maybe get a job, earn himself some money. Again, that becomes clear towards the end of the episode as well. But so desperate in order to keep the tennis club alive, the real main character, Toma, takes a gamble. Maki, he says, I'll pay you to join the tennis club. Well, Maki kind of asks for it first, says, OK, how much are you going to pay me? But yeah, Toma unexpectedly agrees and it looks like Maki is going to play tennis for money. So he needs the money. And the reason why he needs the money is also the reason why they moved homes. It's blatant that his father is, I was going to say a dick, but is blatantly violent and a criminal because undoubtedly they fled domestic violence as a father busts into a house, finds a hidden money, beats up a kid and buggers off again. Yeah, this family's got issues. There's also a cute girl who's clearly interested in Mackie, but I think this is more going to be about the sport and about the drama off court than it is about the relationships. But it's got that sort of nice, calm, almost pastel shaded style which I like. When I see a show like this, I think this is going to be an interesting show. Cause it toning it down, it's not big, bold colours. It's soft and it's comforting. This is a show which honestly surprised me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like sports anime. I've said that a number of times already. But a sports anime about a boys tennis team doesn't really appeal to me. But this one, with its drama, with its nice calm outlook and its rather horrible looking backstory is honestly something which appeals to me. 
I'll be watching more of this when it airs. If you want to watch it more for yourself, you can find this one airing over at Funimation. Dinner's up because it's time for the fourth season of one of the best cooking anime there has been. Welcome to Food Wars The Fourth Plate. Now it should be kind of obvious by the name Fourth Plate. And also should be kind of obvious by the fact this is the fourth season. If you haven't watched the first ones, you can probably just skip this one straight up and just go back and watch the first season. Honestly, do that, it's good. But Food Wars is in your face cooking competition drama. It's about a boy called Soma, who takes part in a cooking school, a very cutthroat cooking school, where you can challenge anyone for anything. And of course, him being a transfer student and quite brash is obviously the target of a lot of ire. Well, this is a lot further into the thing, and if you've not watched any of his previous seasons, there will be spoilers in the next few minutes. So a bit of a warning, I'm going to be making mentions of spoilers now. And so the Azami regime has taken over, and for people who've watched the last of season 3, you know exactly what's happening. The rebels have challenged Azami to a grand Shokugeki. 7 on 7. Winner takes it all, and the loser standing tall. Not a loser's probably falling flat on their face, grinning with tasty food. As that's generally what happens in this anime. The food has probably the most spectacular foodgasms this side of porn. They don't just eat the food, they experience it. They get out of body experiences. Their clothes are, are not just removed, they are torn off in explosions of flavour. But with this being the fourth arc, and this being very much a shonen sports anime's cliche of a tournament arc. There's a whole lot of talking and a whole lot of cooking action, but not much in the actual personality point here. This is most definitely not a point to jump in at. And I will be honest, as much as I enjoy the arc and I'm enjoying the food and the characters, this one felt like it was too much of a reactory show. Most of what was shown wasn't the cooking action, it was other characters reacting to it, and yeah, I know that's how I do with a manga. I've got a manga over there, but the anime could have shown a lot more than just lots of faces shocked at what they're seeing without actually seeing it yourselves. And to me, that just felt a bit lazy. The show could have been much better had they taken the effort to animate it a bit more, add a bit more flavour to it, and honestly, it just ended up slightly bland. It's lacking seasoning. Now don't get me wrong, I will be watching this. I love Food Wars. As I say, I've got the book, don't you have a t-shirt, but I'm heavily tempted to try some of the recipes. And if you want to watch this one, you can actually find it over at Crunchyroll. Now Case File number 221 Kabuki Cho is an anime which I'm still slightly confused about. Welcome to the Kabukicho district of Tokyo. The east side of Shinjuku. And it's a slightly more questionable area. As the lights and the bars go deep, deep, deep. A lone man is looking for a mysterious bar. He's looking for the famous detective. He's looking for Sherlock Holmes. Our main character isn't Sherlock. It's actually Watson. Because where there is a Sherlock, there must indeed be a Watson. This elementary, my dear. But what I didn't expect to see is a whole load of transgender people hosting a bar. Now, I've got nothing against transgender people, but the way that Japan often does it in anime is very much for jokes. And that's the case here, as we're introduced to Mrs. Hudson, the bar owner, and she's your traditional transgender person in a Japanese anime. She is bearded, she's in your face, and she's got a load of friends in very similar getup, but she seems to host a fantastic club full of people who want to solve crimes, including the titular Sherlock Holmes character. Now, a Sherlock in this anime is a very strange beast, which, if you've ever seen a Sherlock series or what read any Sherlock, it's why. In fact, this is probably one of the best representations of Sherlock that's been in an anime for a long time. He's weird, he's bizarre, he's disproportionate and yet is a genius and is not without his quirks. Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman, these aren't. But it's not surprising they've taken some inspiration from that, given how popular Sherlock is in Japan, with BBC TV show that is. And our Watson this time out is a relatively normal guy. He's a doctor and is blatantly there to keep an eye on Sherlock once the anime happens. Sherlock drives a very small car, filled with junk, he's seen as a weirdo, but his crime solving and his, his observational skills primarily, that's what Sherlock has always had, is not so much crime solving, but his observational skills are top notch. This one has a very traditional Holmesian mystery of a murder 
assigned to a serial killer, but just an accidental murder, manslaughter if you will, made to look like that to cover his tracks. Little things like more scratches because of longer nails, or the space between wings in a pattern that's played out with blood. Those little things lead him to a correct corporate. And ignoring the first half of the episode, it was actually pretty damn good. The problem is, the first half of the episode is so in your face, it is hard to ignore. One thing which will help me ignore it, is the fact that Holmes, when he is pontificating about the scenario, he does so in the style of Rakugo comedy. Very strange, but very, very Japanese. If you were interested in watching this, you can find it airing over at Funimation. I'm sure there are more than a few surprises in today's episode, and I've been surprised quite a lot this season so far already. But how about you? What have you thought of today's shows, and what have you thought about the shows as a whole so far this season? Let me know in the comments, and be sure to share this video with your friends. And as ever, thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, bye bye.